getting the privilege to talk here in the Channel 18 studio with Rope Myers, who is a world champion steer wrestler, second generation. Yes, ma'am. My, uh, my father won the world title in 2001, and I was for, or, I'm sorry, in 1980, and I was fortunate enough to win it in 2001. And um, we, uh, I, you know, we come from a rodeo family. My grandparents rodeoed, my, my dad and my mom rodeoed, and um, a lot of our cousins and aunts and uncles and all those things rodeos. So rodeo is kind of in our blood. So your dad came out of California, uh, Colorado, but your family settled in Texas. Well, you know, I, I say this, I was born in Colorado, raised in Kansas, but I got to Texas as quick as I could. Okay. So. And now you live around the Athens area? I, well, I actually live in Van, Texas. Okay. Um, we, uh, we've we lived there for about 24 four years. Um, uh, people always ask me how I ended up in Van, Texas, and I didn't know, but now I, I just think that God was leading me there because I ended up working at Sky Ranch. Lots of things that we find out in daily life, we just have to attribute it. It was just a God thing. <laughs> exactly. I um, want to ask you, did you ever want to do a different sport besides steer wrestling or did you ever have a choice? Well, I always had a choice. My, my parents always were, you know, after whatever was best for us. But from a very young age, a calf open and steer wrestling was what I always wanted to do. Um, I, I was writing that down as early as I could write things down. Um, <laughs> I was playing. Um, I tell people oftentimes, you know, every little boy plays cowboys and Indians. I just got to use real horses. <laughs> What about your brother? He's got a career in this too. He does. Um, you know, my name's Rope. My sister's name's Time. My brother's name's Cash. Because you rope the calf, you tie the calf, and you win the cash. And my sister was very successful in her rodeo life, and my brother has been as well. He's uh, been a reserve world champion in the steer wrestling, and and uh, now raising a bunch of kids that are uh, very talented as well. I saw a picture of you and your dad working together in very recent years. Um, both of you, you know, on the horses, and there was that calf. So I think it was uh, maybe at Mesquite. Uh, so did the two of you get to work together? We do. You know, um, he's not competing at the professional level anymore. So I'm not. I'm pretty rarely competing at the professional level anymore. But um, uh, we. I was fortunate enough, uh, even you know, as recently as a, a couple years ago, being able to compete with my brother and with my dad Hazen for us. So. Hey, great. Well, what about your clinics and uh, teaching? You know, we've been teaching uh, rodeo clinics for uh, this last year, actually marked the 50th, and this last Easter was the 50th anniversary of our Sterhouse and Clinic. My dad started them 50 years ago. I took them over in 91. But for 50 years, every Easter and Thanksgiving, we've had kids, for, uh, you know, kids and men from all over the United States come in for uh, camps and clinics for us to teach them how to steer wrestle. And then in uh, 2004, I began doing that same thing at Sky Ranch, where I was able to uh, expand that. And we uh, we do things like young riders camps, um, kids that have never ridden before, have only ridden a little bit, that love horses, that can come out. We can teach them how to tie goats and rope calves and run barrels and poles and um, really give them experience with horses that uh, um, we think is invaluable. Some kids are just born to love horses. You know, especially girls. <laughs> I have uh, about two to one of my young riders campers are girls. Um, there's something really magnificent in a horse that's powerful and wonderful and, and uh, reminds us of uh, um, bigger things. And I think that uh, it's a cool thing that we get to use that horse as a, as a, as a tool to, you know, then, you know, kind of explain the character and nature of God to these kids. Um, well, horses are very, very important on an individual basis to people with careers such as yours. So tell me about some of your horses. Well, I, we have 80 head at Sky okay. Ranch, so there's a lot of them. <laughs> we have the full gamut. Um, my, uh, one of my favorite horses is we have a, we love the um, Oklahoma Star Burt um, bred you know, bloodline from Oklahoma. It's a really old foundation kind of line. And uh, my daughter's horse is off of that ranch and a fish ranch up in Oklahoma. And and, and, uh, and so Bits is probably my favorite right now out of 80. It's kind of hard to pick a favorite. I um, also have my other little daughter's um, horse. She's a, that horse is 21 now. Um, but it's actually, Sunshine has taught all of my kids how to rope. <laughs> and by the way, her name is Sunshine but she's ill-named. Her name should have been like partly cloudy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two boys, two girls. Is that right? I am very blessed. I have two amazing boys and two amazing girls. My oldest son is 
um, serving as a, a counselor in, in a, a Colorado to uh, family camps. And my other son is working here in, in, in Texas at our Sky Ranch camps, um, being uh, both a counselor and uh, helping with the Wrangler and the horse program there. My daughter is 13, uh, may end up being the president of the United States. That's a possibility, just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, and my other daughter's story is just uh, the little jewel that's uh, fallen along behind all the rest of them and such a such a joy um, to be able to be a father to all of them. Tell me about your wife and what she does. My wife is a superstar. Um, you know, I most people say that that they introduce their wives as their better half. She's my better three fourths. So mm -hmm. um, she is actually the um, vice president in charge of. Uh, marketing and sales at Sky Ranch and she uh, is a big part of everything that happens there you know we're, we're a camp over four states and five locations and um, or three three states and five locations and and uh, she sells the you know we have 77,000 people come guests come through there every every year that we uh, um, get to share you know the you know the glory of God's nature and and other things with them and she's one of the main reasons that they come from so far and wide to come and be a part of what we do well you are you, I have the privilege of talking with you today because you are coming to Sulphur Springs with a jousting part of a Renaissance festival that we've got planned but somehow your wife worked into you getting an interest in jousting in the first place. How did this all happen? Well, that is a kind of a fun story. Um, we were on the way to uh, Gallup, New Mexico for the junior high national finals. My son had qualified and we're driving through the middle of New Mexico. Of course, there's nothing in the middle of New Mexico. And, and my wife gets an email, says, uh, what is this uh, jousting thing? I'm going to sign you up for that. And it was kind of a joke at first, but uh, the joke ended up being on me because they called me back and wanted me to be a part of, uh, of the show and full metal jousting. and, and and lo and behold, I went and they, they wanted me to be on the show and uh, long story short, I'm a jouster now. <laughs> Did you just need that in your life or <laughs> how, probably people ask you to do things all the time. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, you know, I, I tell people oftentimes, if you'll let God have your feet, it's amazing where he'll take you. And um, you know, at some point in, along that deal, I just realized that it was a kingdom opportunity that I kept getting a yes that this was something I was supposed to do, so I did it, and um, you know, got to meet some amazing people, some amazing men, and um, um, got to be a part of something that was, uh, you know, once in a lifetime. Not everybody gets that chance, kind of a thing. Well, jousting will be part of our Shadow Renaissance Festival here in just about another ten days or so from now, and so I, I did not watch the television shows, so I really haven't seen but tell us a little bit about Shane Adams and and this being this coming here to our arena well first of all let me say that um, even if you did see the show live jousting full contact jousting is even more intense than that um, uh, people often ask did it hurt when you get hit well yes it hurts it feels a little bit like get, getting stepping out in the front of a Mack truck but uh, mm -hmm. the good thing is is that um, Shane puts on a great show he has great horses he uh, he understands uh, the, the idea the thrill of the show and, and when you see it live when you see those contacts um, live you see when it happens in in, in, in a in the flesh uh, it is it is pretty impressive and Shane does a good job of being able to put on a show that is uh, both entertaining and interesting and uh, really a sport. Well I'm understanding that and I haven't heard of another being here in our area so is this a first for Northeast Texas? Do you go and put on these types of demonstrations in other parts of the US? Well Shane does it all over the okay. country. Um, <laughs> Uh, ever since the show, I, we, we went, I, I went and did one other show after the show with him, uh, the, uh, the Armored All-Star Challenge in Madison, Wisconsin. Other than that, um, he's been putting on these for a long time, even before the show and after the show. And I have, I, you know, I have an, a life and lots of other things that I'm doing, lots of other interests. But uh, he's been after me since the show to come uh, joust with him again. And so I guess he finally reeled me in. <laughs> it's close to home for you, too. Well, um, 
the Sulphur Springs event is very uh, near, and people are buying tickets right and left, I understand, to get in to see that jousting. And there is a ranch here that is hosting it, sponsoring it, and putting this on that serves a very specific purpose, and it is called Shadow Ranch. It's a therapeutic riding center, and it helps, it helps people. It helps mm -hmm. youngsters and people who are disadvantaged, disabled, again about the outside of a horse being good for a person on their path to healing. That's a John Wayne quote and I love that quote you know there's something about the inside of a horse that's or the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a man and um, it's just true you know there's a there's a power there's a release there's a thing that happens there when a, when a person makes that connection with the horse we see it over and over again um, we have 80 horses and we have all these kids that come out and somehow every time they pick the horse that is their favorite is the best horse and now that the reason that is is because there's something within that horse um, that is healing that is um, and Invigorating, that is empowering to uh, um, the human heart and, and uh, the human body. Well, while we have time about it, let's talk a little bit more about your big interest in Sky Ranch and how it lends to this very same thing. We are uh, such a fortunate thing. When I was at the kind of getting to the, you know, to the twilight of my rodeo career, at least it's the twilight of how long I would like to be out there rodeoing full time. I wanted to be home around my family. Um, lo and behold, we look in our backyard and, and Sky Ranch invites me out and actually asks us to take their horse program from being just an, an activity at Sky Ranch to being one of the points of ministry, one of the focal points of ministry there. And uh, we were able to do that. We've been blessed with uh, events like Cowboys and Cowboys where we raise the money to uh, um, build a big indoor facility. We've uh, um, been able to have camps and clinics. We have everything from our young riders camps that I've talked about to our elite camps, which are college preparation courses where kids come from all over the United States to prepare for rodeo at the next level. Um, we're able to do all of those things and do them with excellence. Um, but the main, the, the kind of the, the heart, the, the core of it is, is horses and that connection with the horse that gives us a, uh, a, a place to exhibit um, some of the wonderful qualities of, of Jesus Christ. And we use, we use that horse in that manner um, to be able to tell the truth of the gospel. Well, it's true with Shadow Ranch and talking with the uh, co-founder, Marion Cox, who's been uh, here on our show several times. The path and the development of Shadow Ranch to, to where it is now, of course, there's still things ahead that they want to do out there, but it has been uh, with God's hand on it mm -hmm. over and over it has just couldn't have been otherwise so in their need for funds and as a fundraising effort this idea went out of a renaissance festival but the bigger feature of it with you and the the jousting uh, demonstrations coming is going to be a huge boost for Shadow Ranch well, I'm glad to hear that because, uh, quite frankly, I'm not sure if it hadn't have been a, a kingdom thing if I'd have put the armor back on. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, if you can help me to picture, since I've not seen this before, what will this like bring to our area? What are to people who sit down to watch the event? Um, well, it, you know, it's a surprise is more than anything else. Um, they they might have been somewhere where they've seen. Uh, uh, you know, a theatrical jousting, and, and um, that's great. I'm not, not against those kind of things, but um, it is a different level of contact that takes place um, when, in a, you know, when they see the first, um, you know, full, you know, solid wood lance break and, and pieces fly up in the air and large men get thrown off the back of their horse, not falling off accidentally, you know, on purpose. You know? <laughs> when they see that happen, they're going to be surprised, entertained, um, encouraged that, uh, you know, hey, you're, the human body's tougher than they thought it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of those things. And with that, um, I think the, the other part of it is, is that, you know, people love anything that gets to be head to head, one on one. You know, there's just something in the human spirit that just likes that head to head competition. And um, you find your favorite guy and you start cheering for him and and he wins or he loses and you pretty soon you're riding right there with him and uh, um, there's a there's a real kind of cool thing that happens and takes place in that and it, they'll be entertained and, and feel like that they've uh, at the same time um, served a good and worthy cause what amount of danger is there for riders and horses 
<laughs> well, um, the horses are safe. I mean, they're they're um, they're usually. I mean, it's pretty rare. It's super rare that anything would happen to one of them that wouldn't happen just riding them normally. Um, I will say that when I f we first got there, one of our coaches on the Full Metal Jousting show said, uh, we asked him, you know, because we were all wanting to know, all of us guys that have never done this before wanted <laughs> to know, is, is are injuries common in the sport of jousting? And his answer was this. He says, injuries are rare. He says, now breaks, contusions, lacerations, uh, uh, tears, those are common, but injuries are rare. <laughs> okay. Well... According to an old timer that I know, um, you were seen here in Sulphur Springs as just a child. You may probably don't even remember this. We speaking back on the subject of rodeo. We had a person here in Sulphur Springs who put on a rodeo, an independent rodeo, for about forty years, mm. pretty much on the same grounds that our civic center sits. And finally, after so many years, uh, his family we got a nice. Uh, plaque on the on the walk over there at the Civic Center that you may see. His name was Mike Pribble. Mm -hmm. So I know your family took you around to rodeos as a kid. You didn't have any choice then, did you? Well, we we <laughs> you know we went to rodeos our whole life. Got drug up and down the road. I, I say drug, but we were glad to be there. We were, mm -hmm. we love doing it. We love the travel. We got to see lots of the country. And and uh, my sister and my brother. Um, we all, you know, got to be all kinds of places. So I'm sure I was probably there as a kid. Uh, would uh, my dad rodeoed all over this country? So, I while I don't remember that exact time, um, I'm sure I was there, and I'm sure I was probably running around underfoot somewhere. I've had my rope in the back, probably trying to talk some uh, local kid into a match on the rope and dummy or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, now you'll be competing again, pretty much on that same ground on uh, July 28th and 29th, okay, is when the, the team is in the jousting, the uh, Nobleman's Feast, all the parts of the Renaissance Festival. It's very exciting for Sulphur Springs. And I thank you for being a part of that. Well, I'm very glad I got to be a part of that and got to be a part of such a worthy, uh, worthy opportunity to give uh, uh, to kids that are neat. And Shadow Ranch is a very good cause. And I want to thank uh, Chris and Kim and uh, Marion and all the others who've worked so hard to put this event together for us. July 27th is pretty much a community uh, uh, day, but the 28th and 29th are the two big parts of that three-day festival. And I want to ask you the same thing I ask most guests. If you if if you had a magic wand, and so the things that have you you've done in your life so far, accomplishments that you've had and successes, what is the thing yet ahead? That you would like to say you did or accomplish well that's a very big question but um, you know there is a uh, there is a form of rodeo that is not yet been seen it's been seen in little pieces that I think could be uh, is the next evolution of the sport and uh, I think it's where rodeo could go and I'd like to be a part of that um, that expansion that uh, that maturity, maturation, so to speak, of rodeo from being um, basically a circuit, circus model to being a true sport. And uh, if I could be a part of that, if I had a magic wand, that's certainly where I would go to. Any more details on that? Well, it's more head-to-head, -head, more team versus team. Uh, be locally, um, each team would be locally based, and so it would build their own um, their own love affair with for their team and their team and would travel to other cities and you'd have uh, both uh, the same way you have uh, local rivalries between you know the Houston Texans and the Dallas Cowboys you'd have uh, likewise in the rodeo in the, in the rodeo world you have a Fort Worth team that has great affinity in that city going against a San Antonio team that has great affinity there so 